Getting into Qualcomm was a bit tricky. So both the rounds were uh, happening simultaneously, one after the other. So mostly based on DSA coding and the concept, basic concepts of C, C++ programming. Consistency is the key and like not giving up is also the key. Imagine coming from an EC background and landing a job at a top company like Qualcomm. Sounds like a dream, right? But guess what? The story doesn't end here. He also received offer letters from Amazon, D-Show and Prime Video. Yes, you heard that right. All of them. Hi everyone, today we have Abjit Singh with us, currently working as a software engineer at Qualcomm. And in this video, he is going to share his complete interview experience at Qualcomm, how he found the opportunity, how he prepared and how he cracked the process. If you are someone who dreams of working at a top tech company, this video is just what you need. So let's dive in. Hi Abjit, how are you doing today? Uh, hi Shruti, I'm all good. How about you? I am great. Thank you for asking. So, all right, you know what? Let's just jump straight into it. Could you please walk us through your interview experience at Qualcomm and how many rounds were there and what was the focus of each round? So, like getting into Qualcomm was a bit tricky because I was from an EC background. I've, I've done my BTEC in EC and then I was working for a company named Versa, Versa Networks, which majorly was focusing on networking related protocols and everything. But like the core concept was same, uh, the programming and low level programming. So then after work, uh, working around one year uh, on at Versa, uh, I wanted to switch my job. So I tried to apply at Qualcomm because from my college days only, I wanted to work uh, at Qualcomm and uh, I tried to apply for certain job roles, but uh, uh, like I didn't get selected for those roles, but for a very similar role, uh, the HR contacted me and she, she mentioned that my resume was selected for that particular role and uh, like they, they wanted to schedule some interviews for that. So uh, yeah, so after a week or something like that, uh, she scheduled uh, two rounds of technical interviews. So both the rounds were uh, happening simultaneously, one after the other. And the first technical round was uh, uh, mostly based on DSA coding and the concept, basic concepts of C, C++ programming, a bit of Python and the computer science fundamentals like uh, the operating system fundamentals and the object oriented programming fundamentals along with a bit of networking because my previous company was based on networking so they asked me questions around that also and like the DSA was majorly focused on I would say that the questions were very hard but they were in the medium to hard level and the, the concepts which were used in that were linked list arrays and trees and uh, the, uh, they also asked me uh, questions based on design patterns like singleton design pattern and everything and uh, uh, some memory allocations which are used in C and C++ programming. So these are all the basics which they asked me and the second technical round was after the first one. The first interviewer approved me and then I was uh, like uh, scheduled for the second round and it happened after five minutes after the first round and uh, it started with my project discussion. Uh, so whatever project I have mentioned in my in my resume, they like they went through that and I I I cleared all their doubts on that and I also showed them one of the project which was based on web development. So I ran that project on my system and after that they also discussed some projects which I did for Versa Networks that was my previous company because the tech stack is almost similar for that and whatever I was working on previously. So they asked me some questions on that and yeah, that technical aspects was all same, similar as uh, the previous one. Uh, DSA coding is uh, like uh, very important for these roles and C programming was a major focus in this particular round because they were uh, like uh, getting deep into the uh, basics of C programming and a bit of Python was also used in this one and rest everything was almost similar. Okay, so before we move forward to the third round, I would like to ask you, what was the tech stack which is required for a company like Qualcomm? So, uh, it's like uh, what job role you are applying for. Like, if you are applying for any uh, low level programming related job role, uh, the major tech stack which they require is C, C programming. Then C++ programming is an added benefit. If you know Python, then well and good. And Linux is also very important and uh, the knowledge of uh, different operating systems. So these five things are very important and on top of all this uh, DSA and basic coding is a must I would say in any sort of engineering related role because 
uh, even if it is a development related role not related to any low level programming they will still ask you uh, questions related to dsa and uh, programming so they will uh, they'll make you uh, write code on anything on any platform or any editor and uh, the questions were uh, questions would majorly be of dsa data structures and algorithms but it depends for what role you are applying for the the like amount of uh, uh, amount of deep diveness uh, which the interviewer will show on their front that would depend on what role you are applying for like for example if i have to say if i am applying for any development related role let's say a back end developer so still they would they would ask me some questions on dsa but the levels level of the question would not be that much hard it, they will ask me some easy to medium level question but if the if the interview is for some uh, programming related uh, Uh, role only then they will for sure ask me some uh, hard level questions which are like uh, maybe some uh, link uh, link list or tree related questions or uh, uh, graph related questions something like that so all uh, the basics remain the same the fundam fundamentals remain the same but uh, just the tech stack uh, varies for programming languages if you are applying for a java developer then they'll ask questions in java if you are applying for a python developer then python would be majorly focused and like c c++ works uh, i think in all the cases okay great so now we can move forward with your third round how was it and what was it about okay so uh, so after the first two rounds the hr contacted me around like 3 or 4 days after the second round and she said that we are scheduling the third round and uh, uh, the third round was also technical round and it was supposed to be of uh, of length 1 hour but it got extended because we were in some discussion related to my project and it started with the same introduction and uh, explaining my projects and everything and then the interviewer went uh, to something related to their uh, specific domain uh, domain questions so i am currently i am working as a software engineer in the windows development team uh, video development team for the windows uh, driver so they asked me questions specific to that particular job role which is uh, all the uh, like uh, Uh, coding and encoding uh, part of the uh, video development and after that they moved to again to the design patterns singleton and uh, other design patterns and after that uh, the major focus in this particular round was uh, all sort of locks and semaphores so these are the concepts of operating systems and uh, they went like uh, uh, while i was answering answering the uh, questions so they were asking me follow up questions for every particular answer so the discussion went a bit uh, long and after that uh, i i had one project uh, on uh, uh, like uh, low level programming so they were discussing that as well and uh, yeah so again two dsa questions two coding questions were there one was from linked list and the other was other one was from arrays and again medium level questions and uh, after that they jumped to oops uh, programming uh, concept where they were uh, majorly focusing on the four pillars of oops and uh, so this was uh, pretty much about the third round and like after the third round ended and uh, the like the interviewer uh, told me to wait uh, for a while as someone would meet me so i didn't know what would happen after that so after 5 minutes the hiring manager who is my manager currently in this uh, uh, like office uh, he come, came to the call and he talked to me about uh, something about like uh, the work culture and everything like it was i won't say it was a hiring manager round but more of like he was trying to give me a brief what i would be doing mm. in the office or something like that so at that time i got an idea so you are currently working under him yeah yeah so i am currently working under him and uh, yeah once once we were talking uh, on that call so i got an idea that uh, i might be selected for this role because he was telling me everything what work i'll do and day to day what work life balance is here in qualcomm so yeah so this this were this was the uh, interviews which uh, i went through for qualcomm and like around a week after all these interviews were completed i got a call from the head hr uh, regarding the confirmation that i have been selected 
and after a week uh, after a week uh, of that call my offer letter was with me oh great so the fourth call was just to tell you that you are selected at your dream company callcom yeah so it was like it was not any interview or something it was just a informal or formal way of uh, like explaining what where i am from what background i am from and what the team does oh great so there were total four rounds at callcom yeah yeah Great, very nice, Abhijit. You have explained everything so nicely. So, before we wrap this video, do you want to share any secret sauce to your success? Any tips or mindset that really helped you during this preparation journey? Okay, so there isn't any secret sauce or something like that, but I would say few factors which can improve your chances to get a good paying or decent job. Uh, I would say number one would be your resume because. the most uh, the most impactful resumes are only selected for any job roles like these because there are tons of tons of people applying for uh, a particular uh, job profile right so how can you uh, like distinguish your particular resume from all those tons of resumes so for that i would say everyone should focus on building their resume more impactful their skills their projects and their experiences should be like well uh, well explained in the resume and uh, so that if the if the hiring hiring team is watching that resume they he or she gets an idea immediately like what's the uh, what's the candidate capable of and everything and secondly like dsa and coding it, it is a must like if you are applying for any role be it a software engineering role or a software development engineering role dsa and coding is very important be it in any language java python c c++ anything but the basic concepts of dsa remains the same and you you should know all the concepts like arrays lists linked list everything so and and the other cs fundamental concepts like operating systems i see i have given a lot of interviews and operating system concepts are like asked in all of the interviews like uh, you would you would see interviews in which uh, uh, interviewers would not, might not ask questions based on your projects or your pri- prior experience but they will for sure ask you questions on dsa and operating systems these two things are very important and uh, like if someone is uh, looking for their first job or something like that then the the most important uh, aspect i would say is not giving up and being consistent because uh, it was not like i applied for a first for first job profile and i got selected i applied for multiple profiles but i got selected from some, for some other profile so you need to like keep applying and keep pushing yourself so that Uh, at some point you'll get some positive result you don't you can't like you can't be like oh i'm not getting this so let's leave it let's apply for something else oh so consistency is the key yeah so consistency is the key and like not giving up is also the key yeah great it was great having you here with us today abjit and thank you so much for answering all the questions so patiently this video is going to help a lot of people out there Yeah, yeah same same year shruti and uh, i hope it helps everyone and uh, yeah thanks all the best everyone for your interview journey and if you are preparing for interviews at multiple top companies check out the playlist we have linked it's packed with real interview experiences from big tech companies and don't forget to subscribe to our channel because we have got some more amazing interview stories coming up including dishow amazon and many more so keep watching until we guys meet again